everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all safe and well. Let me start by saying, if you can hear it, it might not be able to pick it up, but that whirring noise are my watch winders. I bought a new set of watch winders and they're on a three hour cycle and then they stop for nine hours and they go for three hours and they happen to be activated at the moment. They're just running and I don't want to interrupt the program. So if you hear that during the silence, I apologise. Well, as you can see in front of you, I have an XFly model box. Now this was the box, or one of the boxes, from a whole load of boxes, in fact a whole shipping crate, that was seized by customs here in the UK. I should have had this before Christmas. You can see it was HM Revenue and Customs were involved, as well as the Home Office Border Force, because they seized it and they kept it, so I didn't get it for Christmas. I'm really excited about this. The box has a slight bit of damage on it, just here, but it looks though the inner box is okay. I have waited for this for a long time. It did not come straight to me. It was purchased through the distributor via my local model shop. So I haven't had to deal with customs or anything. That was all done by the distributor. All I had to do was wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. But it's here. Shall we crack it open and see what we've got inside? Okay, let's have a drum roll for this one. There it is, the XY model 18mm T7A Red Hawk. Yes, I have the T7A Red Hawk, which is the 64mm version. I wanted this because my logic says that if it's the same design but bigger, it'll fly better. Whether that's right or wrong, we will find out over time. This is a super Christmas present to get. A bit late, but it's still here. Let's take a look at the specifications. <laughs> I say in lightweight yet strong EPO and ABS engineering plastic. 975 millimeter wingspan, just short of a meter. Overall length is 1.36 meters. Uh, wing loading and wing area doesn't mean much to me, I'm afraid, because I'm pretty ignorant in those areas. So if any of you know, do leave a comment and I will be looking at uh, flying weight 3.1 kilograms. Wow, that's the heaviest plane I've ever had. 80mm EDF with 12 blade fan unit. The motor is a 3280. 2200 kV, it's got a 100 amp ESC, centre of gravity 60 millimetres from the leading edge, I think that's what it is on the small one. Five minute flying time, well that's yet to be seen. <laughs> I, I get just about that out of the little one. Servos, 9 gram servos, which seem a bit small for a big model, got five. Uh, but it's also got 13 gram servos, five of those. It's got landing gear, it's retractable, shock absorbing metal landing gear. I don't know what a multifunction control board is, we will find that out together at some stage. Five to six channel with flapperons, intermediate advanced skill levels, okay, recommended battery. They are, it's a 6S 4000 to 5000. I've already got my batteries ready for it. <laughs> Build and test time 15 minutes, what? Takes me longer than that to get out of the box. <laughs> 15 minutes, yeah, right. <laughs> um, let's just take a look at some nice pictures. Okay, so here we are. We've got the front wheel. Be interesting to see how big, or I should say how small this is. There's your retracts shown here. Lots of underwing ordnance. Connected in the wing, of course, here's the 6L battery, and here's the whole moving tail plane. Right, I'm going to have to move this box to one side, and as usual with my unboxings, we will take a look at each piece as it comes out. Yes, right, okay. Well, we've looked at the box long enough, let's look at what's inside. That looks 
pretty compact, well packaged. Everything's still taped up and it doesn't really look as though the tape's been moved. So this might be one of the packages that even though they seized the whole consignment and they did put the seizure labels on the box, they might not have actually opened this box. They can't open all of them, they take a sample. This could be good. Right, let's move that out of the way and then start looking at the parts. Well, we've got lots of ordnance, so I'm going to have to go through this. As it's coming out of the box, though this is in no particular order, they have some sort of fuel tank, and they have the plastic push and slide connections. There's another pylon, same type of push and slide connection, and it's got some missiles on it. Wing. One wing. I don't know if we're going to get this in. It has rivet details. Let's turn the light down. Maybe that's bleaching it out. It actually has lots of rivet details all over this wing. Panel details. Really nice wing. It's got paint over it that you can hardly tell that there's foam, apart from the tiny little moulding injection lines. Okay, here's where it connects. This is a connector. It's stuck in place. So this will be what connects. I've looked further down in here, and all they are are connectors extensions but there's nothing that actually needs to come out of there not that I can tell so the main spar goes through there obviously this looks like it's a connector point as it is here this is all molded plastic on the underside of the wing it's interesting because we can see we've got a spar coming down here and across here it goes here spar tube So it's got a spar that way and that way across this wing. Obviously push and slide connectors for something. It's got a bit of glue in there. Plastic cover for your servo. Ball link servo connector. Push and slide, push and slide for ordnance. But look at that. Look at that. Completely semicircle on your the mine are gonna be flapper ons and they are hinged here, here, here and here. So these are not foam, they are hinges. And there's your dog tooth. There's the second wing. Exactly the same setup. You can see here it's got its connector. It's locked in place because you've just got to do it once. Screw them on through here, here, and the job's done. You can see the screws holding this in place. These servos, by the way, they are digital metal servos. Exactly the same here. Hinged one, two, three, four points. One, two, three hard points where you connect your ordnance. Light at the end with a frosted lens over it, as did the other wing. It's quite nice, I like that. It feels lovely, it feels bumpy because there's actually rivets all over this. Panel lines, rivets, very nice. Yeah. USAF is a sticker, you can see it doesn't quite match colour wise, although the camera might show it, and the Stars and bars here, Roundel is a sticker. These are 13 gram servos. 
13 gram digital metal gear servos. Yeah. Here we have a nose in a bag. The bag's half open. Actually, I have no idea. There you go. There's your nose. Magnetic connection. It's keyed so it can only go on one way. And this is a hard plastic tip. And that's just the nose of this beast. Here's the spa. Now I have no idea if these spars are carbon or if they're fiberglass. It looks carbon because of the lining in it and having been a fisherman I know what a carbon rod should look like and this does look like a carbon rod because I had a lot of carbon fibre fishing rods. Actually I've still got them. Might take fishing up in my retirement. Yep, nice spa. Here's another pylon connector. Now looking at this I would suggest, although I didn't see any connections like that on the wing tip, it goes like that. So that goes on on the underside of the wing with this. So that's a wing tip rocket or missile. Here's another one that I've already connected. So it actually goes flat on here. And again this can come off. Although I won't be taking these ones off, but I will certainly be taking the main ones off when I'm flying. So we've got another one. Here's another pylon with two missiles on it. And we have two of those as well. these over for you. That's the other one. Now I might have to sacrifice one of these, maybe not these ones. I think there's others to use as a camera mount. There you go. Here's uh, one more. So you've definitely got two of these on each side of the wing, plus the wingtip ones. So I think one of these will be cut down to allow me to velcro a camera on it. I might even do one each side. Well everything's been a bit grey and dull at the moment hasn't it? So let's brighten it up a bit. Let's get some red in there. Look at that, that's a fin. That's one of the tail fins and rudder. So apart from obviously being a much bigger EDF aircraft, the other way, excuse me, the other way this differs from the 64mm EDF is it's got rudders. The 64mm EDF is purely a bank and yank. This one has rudders. These are 9 gram digital servos, but they're metal gear digital servos. The ailerons or flapperons, once they're programmed over there, they're 13 gram servos. And it's done so nicely. Look at that. Lots of little dots, panel lines. Now you can on this see the foam moulding. You can actually see the foam moulding, whereas on the grey it's put on much thicker than the red. And you can't actually see it. But it's, it's lovely. I really, really like it. Yeah, it's thicker, thicker and thicker. And that's it. Underneath, here's your connector again. It's held on with screws there. So that's a connection, and then you screw it in and screw it in through here. These are plastic pieces, big plastic pieces here and here to take some of the loading. And of course for your money you get two of them. So this is exactly the same. Obviously it comes out the other way. So servos are inboard. Same connector here. Three pins, screw in there, screw in there. Must go over a peg that sticks out of the fuselage. Air education training command. Yeah. Nice splash of colour. 
We come to the Elevons. Anyway, the all-moving tailplane. Tailorons, I think they're called. I don't know. So it's the tail surface and the elevator. And these are very nice. They have uh, aluminium, what feels like an aluminium rod. Might be steel, actually. And it's on bearings. It's, it's just so smooth. This pushes in and it obviously has got something that locks it in there. Ball link. I love these as well because they haven't just sprayed over everything. The plastic is red and they've screwed a ball link in. No paint on it, so it's just a straightforward connection. Lovely red tail again, because obviously it is a red tail. There we are. And yes, you get two of these as well. Here's number two. Same thing, it's already set in here. It's on bearings, it's going to be so smooth. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Has panel lines on it as well. You can see the foam cells on this as well. But it's nice. Now this is the bit I've been dreading, because it is massive. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to put it down and then I'll come back. Hang on. Et voila! What the heck am I done? It is massive. Okay, I don't know where to start with it. I can't hold it up to camera, can I? Let's just try. Okay, let's just try and do this the way I normally do it. Just like I normally do. He says, give himself a hernia. Okay, <laughs> let me take this spar out. This spar is purely to hold that fuselage in situ in the packing because we've got the much bigger spar which is the main spar and this is just the packing spar this one <laughs> so we can not dispose of but we can move that packing spar to one side now this is massive and I've no idea what I'm getting in the picture let me try and hold it like that. Yeah. Panel lines are fantastic. Stickers on the sides. Let's show you the stickers. Okay, let's bring it up here. This is all plastic fairing on the front of the intake. These are your retract doors, closed of course at the moment. Here's your cheek holes on the underside. Two screws here for your 80mm fan unit. Some servos. These are 13 gram digital servos. Metal gear, everything's metal gear on it. Here's the screw point for your moving tailplane and elevator, all moving surface. So just slot it in, screw that up, job done, hook it up. It's the connectors for the main wing. There's the little connector that you plug into. There's your, for your spar. And these are the screw joints. And you are screwing into brass. Here's the fin. Or the fin socket where you push it in. There's a connector down there. Now it looks as though it might have some red paint over the terminal points. That could cause a signal issue. I'll have to work on that when I go to build it. Ah, uh, yeah, how does that screw in? One screw up here. This is all plastic, by the way. This is a big plastic plate here. All of this. Now here's a big plastic plate as well. 
these are plastic and here's some more cheat holes at the top which are plastic molded as well lots of panel lines and everything I'm really not doing this justice am I? <gasps> there's a great big fat EDF unit in there look at that this is hard plastic at the end show you that this way beautiful honestly look in the cockpit lots of cockpit detail and a pilot the paint job is fantastic on it this is all paint so the three different colours are paint and it's put on so well or so thick I should say you cannot see the foam cells unless you get really close and look okay let's look at that there's your cockpit hatch really this is nice plastic piece here and that means you can put it back in and just push it down The aerial means you can use that to lift it up. That's really nice. Nice little feature. Yeah, I wonder how much one of those will cost. Because what I normally do, I buy a spare cockpit <coughs> and rig it up with a camera. But I can see that knocking me back a good 50 quid. <laughs> Goodness, let's see what's inside this. Wow, not much really. I think that's an XT90. I might be wrong. Yeah, it is. XT90. There you go. That is an XT90 plug. Which is jolly good. Battery goes here by the looks of it. In the back there. And you can move it back and forward. And it looks like here there's some sort of pin board. Don't ask me please, I've no idea what they are. There's uh, all the surfaces seem to be going in there and coming out here except for the ailerons. Don't know what that is. Here you've got your elevator, gear and rudder. But they've got a board in here. I don't know if you can see it. There, with some funny connectors on it. Oops, here, you see that? And I don't know enough about this to know what they are. So it looks like the rudder goes into the board which will be some sort of mixing the elevator goes into the board before it comes out as I said that looks like most of it rudder or oh, the gear goes into the board and that will be for synchroning synchroning that will be for synchronization of the doors and the actual lowering and raising of the gear ailerons at the moment are on a Y lead but if I want flapperons I'll have to change that one two three four five six so I don't know because I've definitely put an AR630 in this and it looks as though it'll go right in the nose here. It's heavy. It is heavy. And that's without the battery in. So I'm really sorry I can't give you a better view of that. Needless to say, I think it shows that it is big. Well, it's 1.3 metres, isn't it? But it's chunky as well. It makes a, Honestly, it makes a 64mm one look like a... <laughs> a little e sheen. Look at that, that is awesome. Uh, they're plastic, by the way, underneath these. They're plastic, plastic, plastic pieces. 
I suppose we're going to have to stick the nose on, aren't I? I have to do something. I don't like doing stuff like this, but let's put the nose on. There we go. One nose. I like the nose. It reminds me of a platypus. Because it's flat. Yeah, so there it is. That's the X-Fly 80mm EDF T7A. I've waited a long time for it. I'm not sure when I'll build it. I want to get some of the bigger jets that I've got under my belt first. Maybe go up to a 70mm. Once I've done a few 70s, I'll put this one in the air. Please leave a comment, let me know what you think. So thanks for watching, stay safe, stay well. I look forward to you joining me on another video soon. Cheers.